The, uh, the meeting to order. We're not going to have public comment because we don't really have a public, so we're not going to do oh, that. Oh, I don't know. Um, first on our agenda, um, it could have been at our last meeting, but it wasn't. Uh, the first meeting or first or second meeting within a month of the election, we have an opportunity to have uh, an election for officers of the board, <coughs> and we'll hold that now. Um, so, nominations? Or do you want to wait until Pam gets here? Hold it. I don't yeah, know. yeah. Well, maybe we should. I, I move that we take that out of order. Yeah, I, I would second that because part of our policy is that we do it when everybody is present. Yeah. Oh, good policy. Okay, so uh, we have a motion. We have a second. Yeah. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, and we'll place that um, last. Okay. Before committee reports. Yeah. Okay, and I hope I don't forget. I'll make a note and I'll remind you. All right. Paul, oh, minutes. Yeah, I recommend approval of the minutes of May 24th, 2022, as written. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 She's doing a good job on the minutes. Um, now we have a decision. Um, the applicant is Susan Perkins on a site plan review application to construct an attached accessory apartment located at 41 Sidewinder Road. Um, and uh, Bob, could you read that for us? Okay. Draft June 14th, 2022. Motion that the planning board votes to approve the application of Susan Perkins for the creation of a 544 square foot one bedroom accessory dwelling unit on the 0 0.67 acre lot located at 41 Sidewinder Road under section 240.12.2 site plan review of the zoning bylaw for a plan entitled proposed ADU scale one quarter inch equals one foot prepared by Susan Perkins, dated May 9th, 2022, along with a plot plan entitled Foundation Certification Plan in Falmouth, Massachusetts, prepared for Susan Perkins, scale one inch equals 50 feet, prepared by Stephen J. Doyle and Associates, dated September 11th, 2003, as well as photos of the house, garage, and driveway areas with the following findings. The applicant, Susan Perkins, is seeking to create a 544 square foot one bedroom accessory apartment located in the existing basement at 41 Sidewinder Road. The 0 0.67 acre, 29,189 square foot property is located in the Agricultural A, AGA Zoning District, the Coastal Pond, Great Pond Overlay District, and the Water Resource Protection District. The lot contains a 1,424 plus or minus square foot principal dwelling and is restricted to two bedrooms under Title V of the State Environmental Code unless an appropriate subsurface sewage disposal with enhanced nitrogen removal is provided. As proposed, the 544 square foot one bedroom accessory apartment at 38.2% of the total floor area of the principal structure provides the necessary parking, meets the minimum lot size requirement, and does not alter the architectural design of the structure. Therefore, the applica application is sa satisfies the requirements set forth in Section 240 dash 6.6 .6 and section 240-14.1e of the zoning bylaw. Further, the applicant will be maintaining the two bedroom maximum on the property satisfying the restriction under Title V. The planning board's review does not include building code review and the board refers to the building commissioner as to issues related to building code and zoning. The planning board finds that the information provided by the applicant conforms to all the requirements and findings pursuant to section 240-6.6 .6 of the zoning bylaw. The planning board considered the sub submitted referrals and the applicant's response in this matter and the board will condition the decision accordingly. Conditions, one, the plan shall be constructed as approved. Any changes shall be reviewed by the planning board to determine if a modification of this decision is necessary. Pursuant to section 240-1, 83B of the zoning bylaw, no permit for full or partial occupancy shall be issued until the planning board is satisfied that the conditions of this approval and predecessor approvals have been met. Two, either the principal dwelling or accessory apartment must be owner-occupied for a period of seven months in every calendar year or, 
owned by a nonprofit organization or government authority whose purpose is to provide affordable housing. An affidavit shall be submitted annually to the building committee commissioner signed by the property owner attesting that the principal dwelling or accessory apartment has been owner occupied for a period of seven months and not otherwise rented as set forth above. Three, either the principal dwelling or accessory apartment may be rented, but not both. During the five months, the owner occupant may be absent. Rental period shall be no less than six months and weekly monthly rentals, some are rentals so-called, are expressly prohibited. Neither the principal dwelling nor accessory apartment shall be used as commercial accommodations at any time. Four, the project shall not direct any stormwater runoff to public property about us or public rights of way and shall meet all applicable standards set forth in the building code as determined by the building commissioner. Five, upon completion of construction, the applicant shall post the address for this residence per section 99-1, a fixing of legible numbers required, time limit for compliance. This is applicable to both the residence and the accessory apartment. Sig signage directions will be provided when the engineering division assigns the address. Second. <clears throat> Thank you. We have heard the motion and it's been seconded. Is there any discussion? No. Nope. All in favor? Aye. 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 It's approved. Thank you very much. Um, <coughs> uh, next on our agenda, uh, Conservation Group Incorporated Green Seal Environmental LLC continued. The site plan review application to reconfigure existing parking areas and access driveways to be paved and striped in compliance with the bylaw located at 81 Technology Park Drive. Jed, is there anything you want to say? Will we hear from the applicant? Uh, not at this time. I'll, I'll reserve my comments until after their presentation. Okay, great. Could you please? Good afternoon, Jose Pichardo uh, from Green Seal Environmental. Um, we have been, since I was last here, we have been in constant communication and coordination with the planning department as well as the, um, the DPW department. Um, in, in an effort to address all their comments and present a plan that incorporate everything. Essentially what you're going to see tonight, it's the same design concept with very minor changes that we had to do to accommodate that. Um, and th th those plans were revised twice uh, to incorporate the, the series of reports that we worked through. And I'm going to run through what did we change, the existing conditions plan, as you can see here, uh, that did not change anything right here. You can see what the ex where the existing driveway is. This is the existing building, and this is the gravel parking area that exists. This right here is the existing emergency access drive. So that's what's important for the, from the existing conditions plan, and again, nothing changed since we were here. Now we go to the site plan. This is going to be now the new emergency access road for the fire truck. And we're going to swap that. This, this now, what was the emergency access, is now going to be the main access to the building and parking area. Uh, we right here have the paved surface with the parking striping. The total parking space is going to be 81, which is um, what the lease company need is 80. Uh, we ended up providing 81. And so we fixed all the calculations based on the way planning board wanted, the planning department wanted to see it. And we are providing more parking than what it is required. And we also talked about that. Um, also, on the last meeting, we had an oversized main entrance for 40 feet. And we talked about that. You guys were OK with leaving that wide. Uh, but based on the comments that DPW had, we did make it the required uh, width because if we left it at 40 feet wide like we had it, um, it was gonna, we were going to have to provide more drainage. Um, to address some of the other comments they had. So we did make it, now it meets regulations. In addition to that, uh, DPW required that we apply for a curb permit 
and we did so. We prepared the filing, um, provided a, a bond that was required for $4,200. So that is all taken care of in file and uh, good to go on that end. And if we move forward to the uh, drainage and grading plan, um, it's essentially the same. We did have to add an additional catchment based on his uh, request, DPW engineer request, and a catchment point before the right of away. So that's, those are where the only changes and very minor um, grading within the parking areas to make it um, compliant with this slope. Uh, requirements. So nothing really important change there. Uh, just add some additional information like inverts, labels, and stuff like that that they requested um, in for, for basically for clarification. The um, erosion control plan there, there were no, no comments to it other than adding um, the, the DPW standard notes. We are, and those are also incorporated to the uh, permit plan as well. And this is the new plan we have to add. Um, I believe that was the main reason why we continued the hearing the last time was for the landscaping. Uh, planning wanted to see uh, the locations of, of the landscaping areas on a separate plan, and we provided that. Uh, the, the light grade hatching, um, it's where the la those landscaping areas are, and landscaping wall to mid-grading, and on green symbols are the, um, the location of the proposed plantings. The only comment we had from DPW on this was that uh, these two trees in here, we had it on the initial submission inside the right of our way. So that would require additional permitting. So based on coordination and communications, we decided to pull those back inside the lot. Uh, and I believe that was the only comment on that plan. Then we have um, construction standard details. There were no, nothing really relevant on those. Fire apparatus, um, radios, we added, um, their, their request, they wanted to see what vehicle did we use, and so we added that to the plan, and th those were provided by the fire department. And uh, basically that is it. This incorporated all, all of the comments that we had prior to last uh, Friday's um, report. That report, which I assume um, it, it's, it's good, we're gonna talk about it, uh, clears all of the pending items, but it does leave um, a few for your consideration. So what I get, at, nothing, no changes were done for that because I only had one business day to it and uh, we, we just couldn't do any changes. And I don't think he's requiring any changes to it either. So if you guys have any questions or additional clarification, I'll be happy to assist. Thank you. Jed, you said you had some comments now? Yeah, uh, in summary, um, we think it's a really good plan set. Um, we've met several times with the applicant and the engineering division to go over all the comments. Um, included in your packet uh, is the latest engineering review. Their new format, as you may have noticed, is uh, green for good, yellow for deferred, and, and red for stop, right? So uh, the good news is there's no red. Uh, there's minor yellows. Um, which I'll highlight in a second. And is this because you doubt our reading ability, or? <laughs> no, I, 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 the engineering division is just trying a new format. Um, so it, well, it'll call your attention to the like outstanding it. items. I do. Yeah, I do, it really helps. So it makes it clear that they've, they've done a good job and that. You're gonna you know, sneak something by, you put it in it the It would green. be difficult. <laughs> <laughs> you have to really look at the greens. Yeah. Okay, so you think they're Two items that are in yellow uh, that I think maybe you, you just want to discuss tonight. The first is the emergency access swap. Um, the comments from both uh, the planning department plus the engineering division were to um, basically add signage to that northern driveway uh, to indicate that that's an emergency access only. Um, and so the applicant is seeking your approval for, for that. Um, 
for that use. And you can see it up on the, on the screen here. There's two signs that will face the street, which will indicate emergency access only. Uh, the applicant has also indicated that they, uh, the employees will be instructed to use the southern driveway at all times. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's the first topic. And then the second one uh, is just to um, make mention of the fact I ran the uh, truck turning templates past the fire department this morning just to make sure that they were on board. They have no issues with the, uh, the plans as drawn. So those, those are my two comments. And they can be taken care of with conditions. <coughs> right. Okay. Nothing my, major in my opinion. Discussion. Paul. Yeah, I just have a question. Um, I'm familiar with this property, and the main way to get into the property was Research Road, coming straight up the hill. Uh, now you call that an auxiliary entrance and have to turn right and come in another area in another way. I think it's a very good idea to have that secondary entrance, but I'm curious why the northern one is called the emergency one and the southern one, the new one, is going to be the primary entrance. Uh -huh. So people are going to go straight up the hill. So this is um, what the fire department has been using for many years. That's what they are trained to use. And it, it's the one that actually makes the turn. So that's the primary. Uh, they will not be access the, the maneuver that we propose and they have said they will not be using the main entrance to, to um, for, in case of an emergency. They will use the, what they have been using for many years, and that's how it works. So that's why we are calling it emergency access. Okay. Does that answer your question? Pat? Well, I have the same concerns that people would automatically want to go in there. And in addition, just instead of emergency entrance, what if we put it emergency apparatus entrance? Makes it very clear. I think because emergency entrance, people are saying, <laughs> okay, fine, I'm going to use it anyway. But if you have it labeled emergency apparatus, I don't know whether the board thinks that's a good idea or not, but I'm still concerned about people just generally using it because of there it is. Yes, or, or even fire emergency. Yeah. We, we could do that. What is the harm if they do? There's no harm if they do, but that will become the main entrance because it's right there well, at the end of Research Road. And additionally, I would like to add that it, it, it's mainly the same person that are going to be coming in here every day. Okay, and their, their, their easier access to the parking is actually the second because they will not have to go right. around, mm -hmm. up, and down. Right. I understand that. And only it will be um, an issue for, like, let's say a delivery truck that comes in once a month. is a new dri um, driver, maybe. Okay. We'll make an attempt to use that one. I think most people are going to drive till they see a building anyways. So they'd be driving down to that uh, bottom entrance. Yeah. But we, we, can, we can definitely make the signs to say what she's saying, the suggestion. I just, I don't know. I just threw it out to try to keep people from using that as a main entrance. As Charlotte said, there's no real harm in doing that. Um, and it I makes see for an awfully big sign to add a long word like that. I, isn't most of the traffic people coming to work parking and then leaving later in the day? Pardon me? What kind of traffic is there here? Only employees. Right, and they come for the most part. Yeah, like I said, you will have maybe a delivery truck for supplies, office supplies, and stuff like that. As um, you know, every two weeks, every month, something like that. But it's people really familiar with with the location, with the building, with the parking, with the everything. Mm -hmm. Unless the use changes over the years. That's true. And but by the way, they have um, I believe the lease is for close to thirty years. So, um, okay. So there. there's a good chance that the use is not going to change. Okay. okay. Then yes. I'll withdraw my. Yeah. My name is Roy Catignani. I'm <laughs> part of the applicant team from concert with the architect. Um, I think we'd prefer it along with your suggestion. I think the idea of restricting this is really a little harmful. Uh, and I can't imagine why you would say to us, put us, the fire department would say, emergency exit only. It seems as if that would discourage somebody from driving. And I think, you know, the building has a lot of traffic, a lot of people, and 
why would there be a reason to restrict it? So I would hope that the board would agree with your opinion and allow us to change it to emer emergency apparatus if that's okay with the fire department. I'm oh, you sure like exactly that the, I don't know the genesis okay. <laughs> of this. Why would they want this? I can't even imagine. I think you're uh, perfectly on point. Okay. I can't imagine. You follow us? I think it would be awfully difficult to sort of imply that those two driveways now are only one. Mm. I think that's just sort of unfair. I mean, it's mm -hmm. two driveways. Why wouldn't you let people use them as they have been for 20 years? And I think the implication of the note is emergency only. I think people would be hesitant to do it. So I right. hope you'll adopt uh, Patricia's suggestion. Mm -hmm. That would be our vote. So you're, you're directing then any emergency fire or rescue apparatus, use this. I suspect that's for the benefit of the fire mm -hmm. department, well, that they would not make a mistake, I guess, and put their apparatus too close to the building. I, I don't know. And, and that is what they have been using for years. So that, that's not a change for them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, it's related to the fact that the property is only allowed one primary driveway. And so that because they have two, one of them is designated as emergency access only, and the other one is the actual driveway for the property. So it's to explain. Exactly. For anyone who wants mm -hmm. to know, it's to explain why this is they're for, allowed to have two. Right. But exactly. the wording on the sign isn't really going to clarify that point. So we, we just want whatever you want on the sign. Yep. That would be appreciated. Any other comments, questions? Oh. A lot of engineering on this. <laughs> right. Yeah, I want to thank you for working so closely with the planning department and getting all of the issues resolved before you got here. That's how we mm -hmm. really hope everything will work. Um, if we could request a, a positive motion for our next meeting. Certainly. Right. And that will be it. You'll be all set. Thank, thank you. you. Okay, thank you very much all for your time. Thank you. By, by the way, this, this is very nice. I like this setup a lot. <laughs> I wish every town had, had a one like this. Can I ask a question just procedurally, Jed? It's um, our typical tra trajectory would be to come to the planning board, seek your approval, which I hope you'll gain. And then may we begin work? Yes. Yep. Will I you be supervising you us? Who will, who yep. will, will you supervise us? It will be the planning department, yep. Oh, It'll great. So we would call your department for inspections and that? Yes, sir. Do you want to set up some kind of a protocol by which we would, when, sure. call, when we would call you? Yeah, we can, we can talk offline. Okay, great. Thank you. We want to call you at the appropriate time. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Good night. Okay, next on our agenda, um, the applicant... That old, uh, Fulte can, has been continued and I believe they've withdrawn. Is that right? They've asked you? No, they're just asking for a continuance, continuance. to I've the next the, meeting, right. which is I've got the letter right. here. Okay, I move that we accept the request from Kathy Politi, um, dated June 10th, that there, that for a continuance of our public hearing for 797 Main Street special permit from June 14th to June 28th. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, that brings us to our final piece of business, which is the planning board reorganization. Where we Didn't can, skip it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> where we can um, elect new, new officers. So we'll have uh, nominations first for chair. I would be very appreciative if Charlotte would accept the nomination for a second year as chair. Second. I would accept. Are there other nominations? John. So I think uh, you've been an excellent chairperson. And, uh, but in my time here, uh, the chairperson has been limited to two years of service. And <laughs> I think you've been here for two years as a chairperson. Yeah. No? no? One year? One. It must seem awfully long to you. Jim thought that also. <laughs> well, you've, you've been doing such a great job. Well, I don't know. We've been trying to make shorter meetings to keep Jim happy, but it's, you know. Not always possible. No, just one year. Okay. That's okay? Yes, thank you. And I move to keep Paul as uh, recording secretary. Second. Third. Second. So then, we have uh, two nominations to continue the current officers. We as need they vice are. chair. We need a vice chair. Are there nominations? Who's vice chair now? Jim is current <laughs> boss chair. Yes. 
I think somebody else should take it. Actually, Pat, you've been actually acting more like vice chair anyway. <laughs> oh, God. Are you nominating Pat? I just don't you want to do it? Uh, no, I don't. Oh, okay. Apparently not. I guess not. All right. Well, okay. I mean, it, it, it seems like you are vice chair. Oh, I'm not. <laughs> well, it's, it's just historical memory that butts in sometimes, so... Yeah, I'll be happy to accept it. Um, so, with those three nominations, um, seconded, all in favor? Aye. 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 And that's where we are. Committee reports. Um, do you have to nominate a clerk? Hmm? We did. We nominated you. We nominated you. And you didn't you. say you wouldn't do it. Who's your loose ball? It's surely you're accepting. <laughs> Yes, thank you. I try to get out of all these things and it doesn't work. <laughs> that is correct. <laughs> Any committee reports? Uh, we have, it's the question. end of the month. Oh. They're back. <laughs> Can I ask you a question? Just not familiar with your process, it does seem to imply that you're not going to vote this evening. Correct. Um, and you're not going to vote this until the 28th, is that correct? Is that I'm your sorry, normal? I thought that we were clear about that. Yes, we, are, we have requested a positive motion, so you know that we're, that's what we're going to look at. Yep. It's a decision that Jed has prepared, and we will vote on accepting it on the 28th. Okay. I'm just asking, curious, is that your normal procedure? Because we've been on the docket now since March 31st, and we're losing good time. <laughs> and the client would like to move in, and so I'm, I guess you're point that I can start doesn't mean I can start. Yeah, it, it didn't mean immediately. Yeah. <laughs> but yes, not, that's the normal procedure. That not possible would, to vote this evening. You have to wait. Yeah, for we another. have to have the motion uh, drawn up and I see and, and voted on. I see. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's what it is. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. okay. Pam, did you want to say anything about affordable housing? It came up before the yes, board, board last night. Right. This was a pre-planned joint meeting between the Board of Selectmen and the Affordable Housing Committee. And we basically uh, spoke about the two propositions that Laura Moynihan had presented. And the board seemed very favorable. Paul was at that meeting. Um, it was nice to see them sort of agree and not sort of punch holes in what was presented. So I think they're going to move ahead with um, letting the two programs, they're not voting to approve the two programs, they're just letting it, you know, get out there to the public and uh, moving ahead on it. And I, I can't quite figure out whether they're going to take any real action on it right now or they're going to do some more investigating into it. Well, I think they've directed the staff to investigate further, to try and figure out uh, the nuts and bolts of each program and whether or not the uh, Affordable Housing Fund can you know, accommodate those programs. Right. It's not That's cheap. Um, so if somebody were to apply, it's uh, $250, 200 $250,000 if someone were to put down you know I, I didn't bring I should have but I didn't bring the um, details of the program but we're going to be hearing more about it and I think there's there are other programs out there that might be even better I mean I think what happens is you hear about programs from another community and then you think, oh, this is terrific. And then there are some other programs. And I don't personally think that we have to stick just with these two possible programs. I'm not very articulate tonight. But was, was there any discussion, Pam, about uh, focusing whatever money is going to be used, either for helping people with the down payment or to meet the other closing costs or whatever, to focus that on uh, multifamily housing and on rental housing rather than on closing costs not I mean it seems as if they're drifting away if they ever did mm -hmm. pay attention to the local comprehensive plan and the housing production plan I don't see why there's such an emphasis on single-family 
housing? Well, I mean, this obviously is a, um, I have to be very careful how I phrase this, but I don't personally agree that it should be single family homes because that was not part of the production plan, housing production plan. It was for multifamily dwellings, rentals. The, the statement that was made last night by Laura was that this was part of the housing plan. And it is not part of the housing plan. Um, and her belief that we need to provide single family homes for these people. I mean, I think that's to me, when people move, I don't care whether they want, uh, it's, that's not what I meant. I, I think to have a place to live so you don't have to commute a huge distance to get here and a workforce that can live where they work is very, very important. Mm -hmm. More important than living in a single family home immediately. You know, I think there's steps that most young families choose. And so that's, uh, I think there are gonna be differing opinions as to the chronology of, do you jump right into a single family house and get a reduction or you get money toward your down payment, you get money toward other things that you need to do. I can't see the town spending, you know, public officials of the town mm -hmm. spending their time trying to design people's approach to housing. Individuals will do that. The, the town's approach to housing is in the housing production plan. Right. That's what it should be. That's, John, you've been very close to this. What do you think? Uh, I don't have the housing production plan in front of me, but I'm sure it included single family homes for um, affordable purchase. And I'm sure, I, I know that, it, that this town wants apartments more than single family homes, but if you're a family, you don't want to live in an apartment, you want to live in a house. And if you can get a house that's affordable, why not? I mean, Bob, Bob's involved with Habitat for Humanity, and they're, they're all single family homes, and I'm sure all the people who live there live there forever, don't they, Bob? Or, much, or yeah. a very long time. Yeah. yeah. So this, this community needs both. Yeah. And, 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 and I, I, I don't mean to interrupt, but, yeah. but my sense of it has been for a long time that this community wants rentals. Part of the reason is all rentals count toward the 10% SHI. If you do a 40B development, housing development, and there's 12 houses, three of them are affordable, nine of them are market rate, and it gets, doesn't get us any closer to the 10%. The 10% has been a very important part of the, of the fabric of this community for a long time. And we're about six, 7%, I think. Uh, but apartments are the fastest way to get to the 10%. You'll never get there with those single family homes. So my sense has been, that's been part of the reason why there's been such a push for apartments. I agree with you. Rentals, I, would, I don't wanna say apartments, I say, yeah. let's say rentals. Rental units, right. Well, and the other piece to the rentals is that 40 years ago when I <clears throat> arrived here, you could uh, rent a house, a year round house, and have three or four roommates in there, but that isn't the case now. So a single person coming here for, say, a teaching job or fire or police or something, you want to get a one-bedroom apartment or if you're uh, uh, a couple, uh, maybe a two-bedroom apartment or whatever. So you can uh, rent someplace, get a feel for the area, as opposed to just coming in here blind and uh, maybe commuting from some distance into town until you find a house to live in. It, it's nice to have uh, rentals. When I moved to Tampa, we, we rented uh, an apartment in a big, in a big complex. And uh, then I left, but my buddy stayed, and he bought a house later on. Uh, so the rentals are important for, I think, newer people coming here who aren't a family that want to get established. And actually, there's, there's one more thing, that the studies have shown that people don't necessarily, today, the young families don't want a, a, a house. You know, they want to come in, similar to what Bob said, get the lay of the land, and then make a decision as to do they want a house? Do they want to stay here? 
So I, I think we need a mix, but I think there should be a preponderance of rentals as opposed to single <laughs> family. And the, the cost for these programs, $250,000 for a family, when that could be spread out to help more than one family for assistance. The housing production plan did not say we don't need any more single family Correct. residences, but it said we have too many in the ratio we needed smaller, less expensive rentals. The huge need was for rentals. Fine, mm -hmm. if there are houses for rent, but we needed rentals. Jim, did you have a thought on this? Well, um, I guess to have a comment, uh, I'm involved in a 40B in uh, Kendall Lane, and there are people that are the lottery winners are getting one hell of a house we're selling the single family homes for a million dollars and they're buying for 250. It's, it's a, remarkable. It's, it, it's just an amazing thing. So that those um, seven people are gonna be very, very happy. But Explain so that to you that the market, That's not the, um, the private market is taking care of providing options for ownership well, no, of I, single family houses. This is a conversation about a use of public money and there's two kinds of public money. The new money they're talking about may be funneling into it, and Community Preservation Act money, which is already well, public money. The and many, should the public be spending its money the, according they, to what it plans? They are on the other 40Bs. The 40B I'm involved in, the town didn't participate at all. And, you know, the, right. It's done all by private money. And it was opposed by a lot of people, but the state made some gets them to do anyway if you keep trying. But the town gives money for Many of the developers, I, I believe, if you take a look at uh, the Magansett Crossing project, mm -hmm. take a look at the public money that's gone into that. It's a huge amount of money per unit. Where the there where thousand isn't it? What? It's it's mm -hmm. huge. I don't know. It's it's I, it's it's really big money. I, I mean, where is the um, Kendall Lane's entirely privately funded? So. I, I thought, in my opinion, the public money should go to apartments. Uh, that's where the need, that's where we need most. Uh, and apartments, I think for our, our planning, that the housing we need needs to be on public uh, transportation routes and, and areas where there's sewer. And for all those reasons, the density, you know, my whole thing is, is uh, we, we don't really pay attention to uh, some of the, uh, Things, but the density is really, really important for the numbers to work, and it only works, I think, when you have public transportation and sewers in the area. And I don't see how you can, if you give money to single family homes, that's going to push it out in the suburb, further and further away from the core. And not within our local comprehensive plan, at least when I was involved <laughs> with looking at it, but uh, it seems these <coughs> funding for projects way outside, well north of 28. I have, are the ones that get all the money from the town so that they can build, build them there because they, they wouldn't work financially if they didn't have the money. So the town's actually providing incentive to build out there. And to me, that's sprawl. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's like, it's, it, it's counterintuitive to what I thought was the town's planning for build, building in the core. But the selectmen and other boards of seem fit to approve these things and pay for them and, and use town money for them, so I, that's their choice. So ju just to clarify, to, for Jim's uh, bringing up like McGansett Crossing in North Falmouth, so I, as you know, I'm your re representative to CPC, right. and then uh, I'm CPC's representative to the Falmouth Affordable Housing Fund, where we take applicants for the public money when we vet the applications, we pass it forward to CPC for approval or not approval. Then it goes to the selectmen and they're the final uh, decision makers. So we have, we have uh, been purchasing deed restrictions for $100,000 a unit. And that's the program for, for a long time, this money was only given to nonprofits for rentals mm -hmm. to help them 
uh, build build the apartments that we need in this town. So we we started having some for-profit developers come and talk to us and say we can build apartments, but we can't afford to do it because of the restrictions uh, from the state for a 40B for apartments. It's not it's not profitable. So we decided to offer $100,000 a unit for every additional deed restricted unit. So at McGansett Crossing, there's 10 apartments there. Three of them would, would have been market, market, or three of them would have been affordable, seven would have been market rate. They asked us if we would contribute money to make the seven market rate ones deed restricted to affordable in perpetuity. Mm -hmm. So, uh, our committee vetted it. We said yes. We'll, we'll do six hundred and fifty thousand dollars, which is less than a hundred thousand a unit. And it went to the CPC. They agreed. And it went to the selectmen. They agreed. So for six hundred and fifty thousand dollars, the town got seven affordable units built, indeed restricted as affordable rentals forever. We can't. We can't buy the land and build a. Um, uh, a rental unit for $100,000. No one can do that. Well, but can I comment on that, John? Because it seems to me that that is the appropriate use of that money. And that's what we thought. And we also did the same thing for the gentleman on uh, uh, Brick Hill Road, Brick Hill Place, whatever it's called. Mm -hmm. uh, he, he had permission to do, through a 40B, 20 rentals. Five of them were going to be uh, affordable, 15 market rate. Same thing, he just could not make the numbers work. Came to our committee and we, we offered 65,000 a unit at that time. So for, I think, $950,000, this town got 15 apartments built and rented, indeed restricted as affordable forever. We're talking 100 years from now, it's still going to be deed restricted, still going to be affordable. It's, it's a great investment, uh, and, and this is my personal opinion, it's a great investment of our funding to get more affordable units built in this town. I, I, I agree, and it does get, and they do get built. But they're, I, they're not getting built where I, I thought we were supposed to be building them. They're getting built in these areas they are harder because we're finding ways to fund them with our money. And if the goal, it's kind of like, well, we really don't need to build in the village cores. What's more important is housing anywhere we can get it, and then that's why we're doing it. So, so we would like to do that. We, all of us would love to have it on the sewer, but now we have a new bylaw that got passed uh, that um, allows developers to do up to 20 units per acre and on the sewer. And isn't it true that that's the first time we've got a bylaw that actually does encourage building and, only in the core. And that, and that density. But before, we might have thought it, but we didn't have a bylaw. That density will allow the developer to buy the land, put up the structures, and rent them without any public funding. So the town of Falmouth's contribution to that is the density, not the money. Well, so, but John, have you heard as part of the conversation for the new, two new proposed programs that, it, that the money be used for things that accord with the housing production plan, that they would, that they would tend toward rentals, they would be affordable. Well, they would be affordable, but that, but that they would tend toward rentals because that's what we need. Well, I haven't. I did not see the. the I didn't watch the selectmen's meeting last night. I'm, I'm not aware of what you guys are discussing. Uh -huh. I haven't read it in the paper. I, and I haven't seen. I haven't seen the, the meeting last evening. Uh -huh. And aren't we going a little far afield right now? Yeah. We are. Because it was a... This is a committee report, sorry. A committee report. <laughs> Multiple committee reports. <laughs> All right, can, Bob's can, right. Can I add a comment, yeah. please? You know, one of the things we're talking about with this affordable housing is always land. There's no land available. And there's a lot of affordable housing projects scattered throughout the town. Mm -hmm. uh, look at Scranton Avenue. There's three right in a row there. And last couple of weeks been a lot of criticism about one of the operations there. I don't know what the issues are. I don't want to get into that. But my understanding is there's a lot of empty units in that building. Is there any effort to try to look at upgrading it, improving these areas, or maybe even expanding? Is money available to expand some of these areas where you do have 
affordable housing. Not that you want to have a entire affordable housing area in one spot, but the land is a big issue. And is money available to do some of the things like that? I mean, if we have unoccupied units because they need some maintenance, that doesn't make any sense. A lot of them need a lot of maintenance. You know, and even taking that one step further, my understanding of the sewer line is across the street and they're not connected. The sewer line was built to serve uh, the Flying Bridge, and it's a private line. Well, if the town took over that line, all these units can tie in, and then it'd be ability to even expand in some of those areas. So I think you, we might want to look at something like that as well. Because I don't see any effort to do that anywhere. I think if we want our you know, thoughts on this, um, to unpack what's going to happen, we should attend other meetings, perhaps, but not this one tonight. Sorry. No, that's okay, because I agree <laughs> with you. Sorry. But we've been brought up short. Bob has reminded us. So. Never mind. Are there any other committee reports, announcements? I have an announcement. Uh, unfortunately, uh, as you probably know, Paul Glenn passed away. Yeah. last week um, the wake is going to be on Sunday and um, he was very active in town I think he was the chair of the community preservation committee yes it still is isn't he well, so he uh, was. I think correct. he was a, a good man in town he wasn't that old by my standards anyway and um, I think it's a loss as well I just like to acknowledge that uh, in case you didn't know that it's good to be reminded it is a loss. Jed. Did you want to provide a recodification working group meeting uh, or um, announcement or committee report? Yeah, I think perhaps just a little update. Um, Pat and I are, are uh, continuing on on the second phase of recodification. We've had a meeting. Um, it's a slog, and we uh, that's the full report. But we're, we're working on it, and we're hoping that that we will have Jed um, being involved too when she says right. it's a slog <laughs> and, yes. and Michaela who is doing all of the, the mm -hmm. staff work to prepare for these meetings which is terrific um, we're hoping that we're going to have the low-hanging fruit to bring to the board uh, to the town meeting in November and uh, at times it looks as if we'll make it and at other times it looks like we might not so we'll see so that's where we are on recodification and I think you were going to talk about uh, Union Square and how we're doing. Yeah, Davis Straits, the form based code. Um, I have a uh, meeting with the consultants this Thursday to go over some of the final, um, the final version of the bylaw with all the edits that um, you folks provided, but also to look over the final graphics. So I'm very much looking forward to that. Uh, and we'll, we'll be bringing back a report to you folks um, at your next meeting. But, our contract with Union Studios expires by the end of this month. So whatever sort of final edits they've come up with and uh, final plan, it has to happen quickly. Well, it's the graphics we've all been that's waiting right. for. So that's, that's, right. that's really uh, something to look forward to. We didn't see any general correspondence? Not in the file. Uh -huh. I was going to have another announcement. I know you went past that. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. <coughs> uh, as you know, I've been involved with Felma Station for some time. Mm -hmm. And the 150th anniversary of the arrival of the train to Falmouth and the Falmouth Station is next month. So I wrote a letter to the chair of the select board suggesting that they write a proclamation. And in the inimitable fashion, they said, why don't you write it? <laughs> Which I did. And select board approved a proclamation last night acknowledging the 150th anniversary of the Falmouth Station. This morning I went to EDIC meeting and I talked to them about this as well. I encouraged them to have a celebration like they did five years ago with the reopening of the Falmouth Station. And that was a big hit. A lot of people came. And, and I was suggesting that they go do something at this time. And there were letters from uh, Tom Cahir and from uh, Ed Haddad from the Historical Commission encouraging EDIC to do that. So I think you're gonna move forward with that but it is July 18th. And uh, they said, well, we don't have a lot of time. So I sat down this afternoon and I wrote invitations and a list of people and an outline to kind of say, if you want to use this, go right ahead. But I'm hoping to move forward uh, with some kind of event uh, on the 18th. 
And it would be the select board that would, oh, EDIC would do the event. Well, it's an EDIC, it's, it's a leaseholder it's at the station, project, so they're the ones right. that have to do it. But being an election year and having maybe some people from Boston coming down, the select board would probably want to be involved as well. Mm -hmm. So uh, Bill Huff asked me to write an article and I dropped it off this afternoon, whether it will publish it Monday, and uh, Friday or not, I don't know. But I think it's a big event, and I think people should really support it. I hope the planning board was on your invitation list. Thank you, Paul, for doing all that. Yeah, thank you. Well, list I put, I didn't put the planning board down. <laughs> <laughs> I put everybody else down. That's a good thought. It is. <laughs> I remember a quick announcement I thought I'd, because Paul brought up an idea. I've been working on something that to Pat actually gave me this idea, and I've been expanding on it, and about taking, a, having this uh, outdoor art display in Falmouth, running from the, from the, uh, all the way from the town green, all the way to Shore Street. And I've had a meeting with uh, the town manager and talked to him about structure on it, and he's basically said, keep going, you're going in the right direction. And I've had uh, one meeting with the, uh, the village association because they, they need, it needs to be a non-profit. They want to be clear, because I run a gallery, I, want, I don't want people to think it's my no. art that's going out there. And I've also teamed up with Arts Alive, and I'm trying to put together a, a team, and if I can get the, the village association to give the go, and the town to say a go, we're going to have a, well, then we're going to start recruiting artists, but I've got to get a, a secure date first before I can invite artists. And uh, it would be basically for two months, because the artists that I know say, look at, I'm not going to move all my stuff for a week. <laughs> it's, you know, it's a huge amount of money to move it and everything. So we're trying to do, like, uh, uh, September, October, October, November, uh, tying in with the uh, Jazz Festival at the same time, because the same Arts Alive is involved with that. And so they've, I'm going to be working on both those things and kind of just focusing on that. I'll know in about two weeks whether it's going to happen or not, or at least whether I'm going to try. Because if I don't get the um, approval from the um, village association or approval from the town, I'm not going to. Not going to do it. I'm not, I can't do it. Well, what what a great idea! How would how would you provide for two dimensional art outdoors? We wouldn't. Oh, so it's all sculptures. It's busy. It has to be all, it has to be outdoor art, basically yeah. art that's meant to be outdoors. But if you take a look. There's a strip of land in front of 352 Main Street, which I happen to manage the building, so I'm really familiar with it. It's on it's town property, it's, and, and it's, you have room for 10 sculptures along the strip of land by, by the library. And then if you walk up Main Street from the, from the <coughs> library, every 200 feet there's a, there's a patch of land with nothing on it. You know what I mean? It's not in the sidewalk. There, there's places where we could have 20 pieces, and then there's also the, the right out here, uh, a, a little park that would be- In the park here, yeah, right. It would be, it'd be fantastic, and it's a way to do it. I don't know if I can reach out and find enough art, but you know, it's, it's, it really could be hard. But uh, anyways, uh, I've got to get the date approved by the town and the, civic, the village association to approve going forward, and if that happens, then I'm going to have a huge project. Oh, I hope it happens. <laughs> it's a wonderful it's idea. Lawn gnomes and some pink flamingos. Well, we <laughs> no, but we, 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 would, we, would, we, would, we would probably go to maybe the schools and say, do you want to work on a project? And sure. you know, try to make it an all-town event yeah. and bring people. The goal would be to bring, have a big project, have hundreds of people come see it. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, in, in the shoulder season. And that's, uh, so it's a business idea primarily. Uh, I will, the art would be for sale. I would not be selling it. It would, any... Any, anyone buys it, they, it would, all the monies would go to the nonprofits, which would be the two people involved, would be Arts Alive and uh, the Village Association. And I would just be a person behind the scenes pushing. Good luck. But it was actually, Pat had the idea one time. Well, yeah. But Jim had the idea to put it out front of his building there, yeah. too. And I thought, then, then you said, well, wouldn't it, it be it? fabulous yeah. if it could be extended? Yeah. It'd be an attraction yeah, I, I for the put town. I did on the street, but then you're the one yeah. that make it go, to, go for town property. Yeah, it'd be a real attraction right. for the town, I thought. So well, we certainly the sculptures it. that are now outside your gallery and, and oh. Eight Cousins mm -hmm. are terrific. Mm -hmm. yeah. you, I posted something on Facebook today. If you've got to take a look at it, a family sent it to me over the weekend. that got the mother standing in front of the, the statue of uh, the, our, our mother holding the, the baby up mm -hmm. in the air called the Bond. 
has the father swinging a kid, swinging Jenny, and another kid on the ground like the other one. They had mirrored the uh, ex things with their, and they wrote me a letter and sent a picture. We were really inspired to do this by your art, and I, I posted it on Facebook How today, neat. Uh, saying uh, what art imitates life. Yeah. And, uh, if I remember, you had pushback. Term, but, uh, oh, yeah. You had pushback when you're putting art on me. Oh, mm -hmm. the, the select board tried to make me take it down, mm -hmm. which I really wish they did it again. <laughs> <laughs> because I got two front page articles and more notice about it's the best thing that ever happened to me. I have to, ta I have to thank them every time I get a chance how much publicity they gave me on that one. Well, that must be why Ed had that now. He's really intent on uh, raising enough money to buy the reader. Your yes. sculpture that it, yeah. to put up at the West Falmouth yeah. Library, it, it, which so would be funny. great. It's become my Wouldn't best it? friend through all that all that process. Here, he, yeah. he, he, here's his board was the board given in charge to make to take it down, right. and, and they and turned out being my biggest supporters. Right. Okay. Uh, well, good uh, luck with that. Can I, ask, weeks. can I ask a question on that? You said people don't want to move their things here for a short period of time. What time frame are you talking about? Two months. months. Two months. They, no. So, some people said, "Well, why don't you only do it for a weekend or a month?" Yeah. And I, I, the artists, I'm getting to know a lot of artists now, and uh, they said, you know, it's really hard to move them. We have to take them, they, these things get scheduled on in advance, they have to put them on a truck, and in this case coming over from Martha's Vineyard or from all the other areas. It takes uh, time to install them, it's just a lot of work, so they, they want to have them out there for a while. So you're talking about a two month time two frame, month time not frame. 30 days. No. September, October. So two months, and, and probably the highlight of it would be around the jazz festival at mm -hmm. the same time. So that people could walk up and down the street, enjoy jazz at different places, and stopping by the art at the same time. Soon it will be like New Orleans. So, are there any future agenda items on your mind? I have two announcements, if, if, if I may. So, I just want to remind everyone that Kim Fish is planning on attending our next uh, uh -huh. planning board meeting. So that might be a good opportunity to have a discussion about affordable housing. So that's announcement Next number time, one. 28th. Kim Fish, our new, yep, our new housing coordinator. I should make that clear. And then um, we are going to be starting our interviews for the assistant town planner position next week. Next week. Oh. Yep. Okay. So I'm very excited to, to announce that that process will be getting going in earnest uh, at the middle of next week. Have we many applicants? We had three applicants. So it'll be a short process, but it'll be a good one. Is anyone from this board going to be on the committee? No. Is that typical? Yeah, for um, department heads, that's usually when you would participate. For um, support staff, it's, it's my understanding that's not the process. It's the right. department head that right. yeah. yep. does that. Yep. Right. Glitz and glamour for that, for that <laughs> level. Well, good luck with that. Our next meeting, June 28th. Yep, move to adjourn. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Good. 7.30. Great. Aye, yeah.